Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 398 at scavengerlife.com. Uh, recently in the community, we've been talking about how much we all spend on inventory. Mm-hmm. And it always comes up when someone's relatively new to eBay, or at least new to like trying to run a full-time store. Yeah. The question comes up, you know, what do I do with my profits? Do I put it all back into inventory? Um I always, I just, I guess I don't know the answer for other people, but I know for us, we don't spend a lot of money on inventory. Right. We try not to. Unless I'm not understanding. How, I mean, I just, I'm like, there's so much stuff out there. Yeah. If you're a little bit creative, I feel like you don't have to spend a lot of, of money. I mean, I say on a regular month. If we spent two or three hundred dollars, that'd be a lot. That'd be a lot of money. Now, I will say there are times where we've gone to an auction and dropped a bunch. Absolutely. If we go to an auction, we can spend up to a thousand dollars. Right. You know. So I'm not saying always, but just like on our normal, when we're you know going doing errands and we stop off at our spots. Or like thrift store spots. Right. Like our, I mean, our circle of... If we spend $30 at one of those places, that, that would it would be, a, be lot. a lot of money. We were, we were like, wow. Right. We do live in a rural area, so prices are cheaper. We True. have been to the cities and been to Salvation Army and been like, what? I think part of it too is just if you are around long enough and drive to all the places, you know where the good places are. And you'll right. know what days are the days to go. Right. And it's cheap. I, I don't know. Uh, but again, this is just for us. I know some people live in urban areas where competition's higher. Yeah. Uh, stores are maybe more uh, savvy and charge more. It, it it also depends on people's, you know, their styles of how they sell. You know, we're the long tail. I mean, yeah. I feel like we always talk about it. But, you yeah. know, we, we are looking for the stuff nobody wants. Right. And we're willing to hang on to it. Other people, the way they sell is fast. Right. So I want to buy a $5 shirt and sell it for $20. This week. And within, yeah, yeah, a week or two, yeah. you know. And so their inventory costs are going to be much more. It's just when I hear a new people say, you know, I'm making, you know, $2,000 a month or something and I'm putting all the profits back into, into inventory. inventory. I'm like, really? Like... Like, what inventory are you right. buying? Like, I mean, you also, it just, uh, you know, it depends on what people are buying. It depends on, you know, we know people that live in New York and they spend more on vin- inventory, but they're buying like high end designer, like very fancy stuff and they get a good profit. You know, they get a much higher profit. Right. Like, they're willing to spend know. $50 on some yeah. skirt. And they'll make $300, for, right. $400, you right. know, and yeah, right. so it's just, it's different markets, but if, I, I feel like if you're in suburban or rural areas, like, yeah. you can find stuff. So, yeah, you. I mean, this is not to say any one way is right or wrong. Yeah. I'm just trying to tease out if people could really start thinking about how much they're really spending on inventory. Yeah. Um, I think also, to be fair, we've been doing this for a long time, and I feel like we've really front- uh, loaded our store, right. so we have eight thousand items That's, in our yeah. inventory. Talk about front loading. It's taking it's taking us a decade to right. get to this point. Um, we sell about two hundred items a month, right? So we sell about twenty four, twenty five hundred items a year. Yeah. So we sell about twenty five to thirty percent of our store. Every year. Every year. turns, yeah. Which I think in some sense, I mean, I'm like, wow, that's a lot. But know? in some sense, a lot of people are like, I want to turn my whole store. Yeah, year, I mean, you know? I think so a different. traditional retail guy who went to school for all this stuff and thinks of it that way, right. they're like, you should be turning your inventory over every month, you know? Right, right, but right. <laughs> it's different for us, yeah, you know? Yeah, uh, And we currently list probably about 2,500 items a year. Yeah, we probably, I mean, with helpers, that helps a lot. So Um, we basically keep our store... Like topped off. (laughs) Yeah, like it's like topped off. Like we list. And so all that work in the early days has given us this huge inventory that we now just keep filled. Right, You know exactly. Uh, And so I think that also helps us not have that stress that I think someone with like a 300-item store 
who might also be selling 30 or 40 items a week. I mean, there's a lot more pressure on them right. to like bulk up their store. Well, my mom's store, I think, is is between 900 and 1,000 items, 800 to 1,000 items approximately, depending on what when it is. She'll go a few days without selling stuff. I mean, right. that happens. And you're like, that's a lot of inventory. But... You know, she makes a good amount every month, but still. Yeah. Like, I, I was thinking maybe a next week when the topic could be, you know, when we first started doing this podcast in 2013. <laughs> right. We wrote a manifesto. Right. Because, you know, we were new to doing the podcast and people would just say, how do I What's do What's your this? deal? Yeah. So we just wrote a very a simple, like, five-step process. Yeah, of how we do it. Yeah, like... You know, a list five hundred items and buy it now. And anyway, I, I think I think a good topic might be for us to revisit that right a minute a, a, a festo and see if it's still a mix. Like, sense is it still true? You know, six years later or yeah. whatever. Like uh, because well, five hundred items. I mean, it's good to bulk up to five hundred items because that's a lot. But we're like, is that enough these days? I don't know. <laughs> Depends to on what it is. Have a full time income. Right. To have full time income, yeah, but to start. also full time income is means much different things to many different people. Right? You know, I mean, like, I know I know people who have like a store with three hundred, four hundred items, and they're making sometimes as much as us sometimes. And you're like, what? Right. But it's just like different. Steve Schultz, yeah, right. It's different high end. Yeah, like he's an example of yeah. someone. Steve Schultz does the what sold uh, videos every uh, Wednesday. You know, he will go to a. A yard sale, right? Become friends is with a guy and be like, "Do, do you have any stereo any equipment? Stereo? Just and, dusty." And the guy whatever. goes in the attic and pulls yeah, some like, like crazy, yeah. and he's like, oh. "And you know, Steve's willing to throw down eight hundred dollars, right? And either piece it out or sell the whole thing for a couple thousand, you know? Yeah, so. several thousand. So, but he, so his his uh, you know average selling price." is much higher than ours for certain items, you know, and for most weeks. So it's, yeah, the, as we say, the equation is different for yeah. everybody, for but, everything. But if you, I, I think there's a lot of people like us out there on eBay. Mm -hmm. We're like mm -hmm. selling the detritus of the American society. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's out there. Yeah. And if you're just willing to go <laughs> and pick and find stuff, I just don't see how inventory costs are really that big of a strain. Yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, especially when, like, a, a, a yard sale a season comes around. I mean, we would oh, have, like... A hundred dollars in ones in, ones. in our pocket, a big fat roll. Like back when we were really into uh, yeah. yard sales, we kind of got tired of them. But you yeah. know, you go and spend five hours driving around, and we would never spend all hundred dollars. Yeah, no. And we would come back with bags and bags. There's of stuff, so much stuff. Know? I mean, and if you live in a suburban or urban area, you have ways of sourcing like all the like you know, let go and Craigslist and Facebook marketplace where people are either selling stuff really cheap yeah. or giving stuff away. So you're like, those are other opportunities that are like, you know, dirt cheap or free too. So if you're my question for uh, you is, so it's been a decade. We have 8,000 yeah. items. Yeah. We're now a uh, listing as much as we sell. Right. So we're just kind of staying even. How do you think we made those big jumps? From, you know, yep. a 500 item store to now yep. 8,000 items. Um, at first it was us not having like video jobs. So that was my primary job. We right. didn't have any freelance gigs. Uh, we were just, I remember we had just bought our house and like gutted our house and we were living inside our house. It, it was a construction zone. It was zone. a construction right. zone. We were finishing our back building. Um, so we could live there so we could finish our house. And I remember sitting at this fold up table with my computer and just listing. I don't know where we, we were taking photos somewhere. I don't know. Um, and I just remember listing, listing, listing. And then the next big jump was having a helper. And I think that was two years ago where we yeah, started two that. Two or three uh, 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 years ago. Especially yeah. this one, our first helper. Um, yeah. she actually worked full time for she, one uh, yeah. summertime and uh, that was when we, we like doubled had, our store. We had like perma 
dead piles. You we know? had so many dead like, piles. We, we couldn't keep up. There was just permanently, we had piles of stuff. In our house. And she got <laughs> through all of them. And I think we added about 2,000 items that summer. Yeah, I think we doubled our store. Uh, or, or at least, it was a huge chunk. It was just, like, massive. Um, and then... Now we still have a helper who's part time, and we almost can't keep up with our inventory. Right. We she does twelve hours a week. She does twelve hours a week. She does about five items an, an hour. hour, but she actually does research and title it very well, almost too well sometimes. When I'm like, you put way too many item specific, like you don't even have to put all those. I mean, it's not bad, but you know, like so, you know, it's. That helps you cut through the inventory. I mean, the fact that we're shopping, we're like, oh, God, she needs stuff to do for the rest of the month. Like, let's, we can talk about what we bought, you know, yeah. last week. But so, yeah, so that that's how, uh, having a helper do the photos, at least just do the photos and do like, you know, 100 drafts a week or whatever, you will bulk your store up very yeah. fast. Yeah. That um, helped a lot. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, I. I just thought that was interesting. It's just amazing to me when I see some people on the uh, forum. They say that their, you know, inventory costs are, you know, eight hundred dollars a week or something. I'm just, it just depends. I'm like, on that's what you're a buying. lot yeah. of money. You know? Yeah. Um, I think also if if people are worried about that, some of the things that we do um, is. Like we always say, we look for the things that no one else is interested in and try to see what you can do with those. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of a game and it keeps us really engaged, you mm-hmm. know? Like we are, I mean, there are the kind of seller who are more like the Amazon kind of a seller where right. like their competition is Walmart, you know, right. where they're more like, what a widget can I buy? And yeah. they put, you know, $5,000 on their credit card, but, but then they might make 20000 that's not us. What we get engaged with is, yeah, what are the things that people don't want? Right. How do we get that? And then how, how do, do we make mar- money on it? And it so feels so good. It's so interesting. So so we were looking at an online auction this week, and there were all these lots that were going for super high. And we were like, okay, do we really want to compete well, with those Real quick, ones? let's talk about online auctions. Okay. So uh, I don't know. This is why I love having a community of people yeah there are people who say that they buy mainly from online auctions right and i'm like we've done it it's before i got kind of tired of it but i don't know someone just uh, mentioned it again and i was like yeah. let's let's just try. let's see we we need to get stuff for our helper right like i feel like we're just one day ahead of her yeah so why don't we get a bunch of stuff and so i went on some we actually heard a podcast about tsa when they confiscate stuff it all goes into a big pile and actually there's an auction in pennsylvania yeah that gets it all and they actually right. for some a reason that auction gets all the stuff from tsa from like it's new jersey new york newark Boston. like that's a lot of yeah. stuff and so every week they have all this stuff so much and stuff. they'll have like boxes of knives and you know all the stuff that isn't allowed just on the plane. anything that's not allowed on the plane or was left behind and then I looked and I was like, ah, I don't like any of that. But then I was like, wait, there's all these other online auctions. Right. And then, in other yeah. in other places. So so part so right. So we were looking around in that auction in, in Philly, we or it was not Philly, uh, it's Harrisburg. Um, we were just like, nah, I'm not really seeing anything that I'm excited about that I feel like we could get for a good price and could sell for a good price. Um, but we found another auction that we were like, huh. These are kind of cool items. Nobody else really seems to want them. I think we had another person we were bidding against. But it was, it was like a military clothes. It was military yeah. clothing and jackets and like random other stuff. And we've done, number one, we do well with military clothing, um, depending on what it is. And uh, I think we can market market it in a way that's not exactly like, 
this is a military jacket. We're like, how can we market this in a different way to make it... To put it in a different in, context. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that was interesting. When we were looking at the TSA stuff, I think we got in a fight because I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the answer... Right. I, I just was like, I don't want to look at it. I don't... It was too overwhelming. Yeah, I was overwhelmed and I was just like, I don't know what the right price is here. And then when we saw that other lot, I was like, oh... And just That's, to be fair, that makes sense. I think you know we 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 find our, our roles in kind of a natural way. I was like, "Are you interested in this?" And uh, you said yes. And then I took over. Right, right. And then I told you how much I bought it for, which was I bought it for one hundred and twenty dollars, which I yeah. think would have been more than what uh, you might have paid. For yes, it, it would have been. Um, but it, but then we but it, drove three hours right to get it. And then it was three hours back. We had something to do in between. On the way, yeah. Um, so perfect. And uh, yeah, and it's a bunch of stuff and it all sells. I mean, I think we could make three or $4,000. But the problem is, how long is it going to take to yeah. sell? But the good thing blah, is, blah, 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 we're yeah. long tail sellers. So we're like, you know, hopefully we price it so that we are going to sell these you know, relatively quickly. But. but that's the thing, though. If you are getting into online auctions, if you go to Gov deals I think it's gov deals yeah yeah and there's like there's all there's this whole family of like online sites it's within gov deals.com and it's like industrial stuff and school stuff you can do all kinds of stuff like yeah police confiscation stuff I mean you could spend all day long only looking at auctions in like a 300 mile right radius you you could buy stuff all day long. Yeah. I mean, this stuff we have here, it's going to take us a while to eat on all this, you know. <laughs> We're going to eat on it. Uh, so you could, you know, buy online auctions all day long. Uh, I will say, though, it's always surprising to me how much a lot of these auctions go for. Right. Even when you go to go to one of those, like, online estate sales where they just sell individual little items like an old ice cream a maker that's broken. Right. People pay like twelve dollars for that thing. Yeah. So it really does take a lot of time because you have to go through a whole lot of them. You have to kind of watch them. You got to wait till they end, and then in the last you know half an hour, see if you know you want to go all in on it. I mean, so well on gov deals I mean, too. Yeah. What's what's hard is like okay, this lot that we bought. It was a mixed lot of random clothes and whatever, and. The photo they show is just like a box of these clothes. You're like, I have yeah. no idea what quality these are. Do I have to wash them all? Like and they don't answer you. They, yeah, you're like a... you're, it's a total crapshoot. You're just like, yeah. I hope this is okay because <laughs> we've had times in the past. Yeah. That's why we stopped doing you know government liquidation because we were just like these last couple lots. We we had two lots of items that we were like. These are really bad, right? Because actually. we spent like a thousand dollars on them, yeah. so it was tough. Yeah. But so, I don't know. It's I think it's good to explore it again and try yeah. try our hand at it again. It's just another one of those things of just we are always trying to change what we do, yeah. to keep it interesting, yeah, to make to it interesting. It, uh, yeah, because if it's just the same old, you know, going to the same old Goodwill buying the same old shirts. Yeah, flip them for a specific amount of money. I don't know. I would get well really for real us. It just that. doesn't work. I yeah. mean, we just need some variety so that. But again, you know. that's our personal thing. I just always have to remember that. You know, some people like we're more interested in the process, and some people are just interested in the outcome. Right. Like as long as I'm making X amount of right. dollars, I do not care what happens between A and B. Right. For us, it kind of matters what happens between A and B because if we if that's not interesting to us. I don't want to do it. We just won't do it anymore. I want to do something Okay, else, uh, yeah. let's talk about eBay this week. I noticed, and this is frustrating to me. So eBay, they will send us these little a message and say like, 10-year items don't have like eBay IDs. Or I right, don't even catalog know IDs. Catalog IDs. And then we go there and then it doesn't get fixed. And so I don't understand what the problem is. So for me, what I've tried to do is I have to double check this, but it'll be like, you need catalog IDs for this vintage item. That's new in the package from the sixties. You're like, great. So when you go in and you're like, you know, either make a new catalog item that never worked for me or say it's not applicable. 
like they don't recognize that. Right. You're like, well, I said it wasn't applicable, but you're still telling me. So I need are those it. like ten items? Are they still active that someone can buy? I'm or? pretty sure they're active. Hmm. They've never said they. I mean, right. I have to double check, but so is that item there? There that a number they're asking for is like when you have one page where there's multiple different uh, sellers that are yes, selling like okay. Amazon, like an Amazon. Yeah. Okay. I'm so pretty sure, that, but it's really weird because our items are so not a part of that world. Right. It's not like, as we always say, an iPhone case or a whatever that's new with a barcode. Like, I mean, have you ever searched on eBay for an item that we're trying to buy? And seen a catalog page? And seen a catalog no. page? No. <laughs> like where? I don't think so. It's like, where do those pop up on eBay? Unless it's like... I feel like it's like new technology items. Like if I'm looking for an iPhone 7. I feel like, but yeah. I mean, I feel like we've tried to buy new items on eBay. You know, like we're trying to buy. But I see like a thousand listings. Yeah. You know, you're not like, it's an iPhone 7. It's like 7. a laptop case or something. Right. I, I don't see. Yeah. Well, so that's the thing, right? So if I'm looking for like, okay, I was buying like a pack of these like um, thin, you know, circular batteries for the remotes at the rentals. And I buy them in like packs of 10 because... You need them all the time. I, you know, you would think it's the Energizer brand, it's the 2032 battery, whatever, that there would be one page. Right, like a product Right, page. it's a 10-pack, whatever. No, there are like, you know, 3,000 listings. Yeah. And you're like, that's the kind of thing that... I'm not seeing the catalog pages. I don't know if someone can give us an example, but... Yeah, so I would love to hear if anyone has had this happen to them where eBay like flags some of your items and say right. they need a product identifier, but then it's not clear how you put a product identifier on it. If and, that doesn't exist yeah. and you try to make a new catalog page, I just had problems with it last time. Maybe they fix it since then, so I need to check, but... Yeah. Look, it's stuff like that. I that feel like it's been going on for a long time, it, and I'm just bringing it up now because I finally got kind of a... Well, I'm also, it. like, so lazy about it because I'm like, oh, God. Like, do I really have time to look at these? I have, like, so much other stuff to do. Yeah. But I guess if they're not being listed, I should definitely yeah. make sure... Because I don't know if... I don't know if they're active, but they're just, like, hidden in search Right. Or I mean, that would be so, crazy. So, yeah, yeah, I just... Look, what you need to do is send me a note and remind me because I'm going to forget because okay. it's annoying. Okay. Gut reaction to this week. Uh, you, you don't have to give me a specific a number unless you want to. Very good week above $2,000. Okay. That's, that's my gut reaction because yep. we sold a lot of high dollar items. That was uh, shipping stuff. Was super annoying. Good. And I'm trying to stay up with my late shipment, uh, late shipment rate because December was horrible. So I um, am shipping up until my carrier gets here. I noticed that we got one I in know. January. I know. We got one in January. <laughs> but it was, look, it was this piece of artwork um, in... I sent it to California. It took forever. It took like 12 days to get there. And I'm like, what can I do? I don't know what to do. They paid yeah. for the cheapest shipping. I sent it the cheapest shipping. It took 12 days. Yeah. So I can, I had two removed yeah. last week. I mean, so I don't know. I do, I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but right. I just feel like with eBay, if you, if, if, if you as the a seller ship within your handling time, right. And it gets scanned. It's within the, the Your scannable scan time. time. That's when you should be held not responsible yeah. for anything else after that. It's, yeah. It seems a little wacky to me because there's nothing we can do other than, I don't know. What can we, we do? We pay more for like a higher right. a shipping. It doesn't make than sense. With the, buyer pays right. for like I, I don't know how they think it's going to change a seller's behavior look you know? that one that we just got for january i might just because i got two removed because i double checked you know yeah. my handling time when it got scanned you know if they paid for a parcel and it took 12 days you maybe that is okay i don't know i have to double check i mean the but. good thing is next month yeah march the December's will drop. The December's off. will drop off, and we'll be okay. Yeah, know? I mean, there's December there's is... like a there's definitely they give you a wiggle room. Yeah, it's for us. It's like thirteen to a fifteen a week and a half in a three month yeah. period. Yeah, it's just because December we got like so thirteen bad. of them. Um, yeah. Anyway, it really 
honestly, at the end of the day, it's not a it's big really, deal. Really? Who cares? It's just, but it's just one of those numbers when you're like being just when a eBay is giving you all those like yeah, a, a grades and you uh, want to be the good boy and have the yeah. good grades. Um, yes. So God, interaction numbers. was it was a good week. It feels like this feels like the holiday I know. season to me. I don't know when, what's like, going on. Every day we're selling like seven to ten items. Right. High dollar items. Yes. Different kinds of stuff. It's very, you know, this it's, makes eBay feels fun. good. Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh, good. Um, okay, so the real numbers are for us. We sold 58 items. It felt like that. Yeah. That's a lot. So almost 10 a day, and we gross about $2,700. Gotta love great, that. Gotta love you know? And that number does not include any of our personal electronics. Like that one week, I think it was last week or the week before. Right. We well, had we, a huge week, but I sold my laptop. We, we sold a laptop for over 1000 Yeah. We sold like a painting for 1000 Right. You know. But this week was... Okay, out of 58 sales, we sold six items over 100. Right. We had, we sold 12 items between $50 and 100. Right. So like a third of our items were over $50. Yeah, I mean, which God, I wish I could have weeks like that all the that's time. That's what I love. Yeah. You know. Um, I sold a rug for $180, no yep. offer made. It was to a prop house yep, just in, a vintage, in Atlanta. Like, worn rug. It's like yeah. great. I love it. We I s- sold a couple things to prop houses this week. We sold a vintage a Madden football shirt for a hundred dollars. Madden, it's like a video game, right? Yeah, what is it video game. I don't know. No, no. I mean, I shouldn't. I mean, two things I don't know about: video games and football. I don't play that stuff either. But I guess if you're like a guy, you kind of hear From, about this stuff. Like, Madden yeah. football, like <laughs> it's God. That stuff's been around since I was in college. Well, I just, I, the thing about that one was, I think it was, it was like vintage. a vintage. Yeah. It was like from the yeah. '90s. Like it was a. Yeah. You know, it, I'm sure that game is still around in a different form, but I mean that's a good example of like t-shirts. You know, they're everywhere. Right. You buy them cheap. The rare shirts will sell well. It's, it's yeah. you know. Um, we also sold a vintage Windows 95, like, ball cap for $90. $90. And, again, that's an example of, like, where ball caps, so easy to find. Yeah. And they're find everywhere. All the time. You could go down the rabbit hole and just have hundreds of them that don't sell. Those rare ones will sell. And yeah. it's about being it's creative and knowing which ones to price high. Like, right. when we saw... Those Windows 95 hats? I think I got three of them. I was like... Get those. And it's so weird to think now that someone would up, like pay up for like... It's vintage now. You know? I mean, the Windows. 90s are vintage. Look, when we started 10 years ago, the 90s weren't vintage. Like, I, you're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but now you're like, vintage 1992. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we sold two pieces of pottery... This is my part of the podcast yep. that I love. Yeah. Because I'm like, pottery, love stuff and, <laughs> pottery and glass is like the bane of our existence. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it, but we get attracted to it because it is stuff that nobody wants. Nobody wants this stuff at auctions for yep. the most part. And so we sold two pieces, one for 125 and one for 150 One person hasn't paid. Right. I, so I'm hoping they will. Yeah. Until they don't pay, I'm going to say it got sold. Okay. <laughs> It was not included in our like sold prices. Yeah. But you know, I really warn people about going all in on pottery. Sometimes we mention stuff we sell and people like it's like tough. mugs and then they're like, Oh, I bought three hundred mugs and that was the worst <laughs> decision. We have six large shelves, like three by eight size yeah. shelves. Six of those shelves filled full. <laughs> So I have very a little confidence that that we know what we'll sell. Right. In that, so it's always amazing to me. I'm like, that is like winning the a lottery. lottery. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I can't believe that Just weird random like teapot and like little pitcher. Yeah, that. I sold it. Well, the teapot I sold last week was a matte black Wedgwood. Right. I sold that for over a hundred. Mm-hmm. But it was it over a hundred? Yeah, it was like one twenty five. Great sale. Couldn't couldn't ask for a better. And it was tiny, so it was yep. easy to ship. Okay. Um, what we would like to talk about that we sold that was exciting for us, going back to like what drives us, right? What gets us excited? Parting stuff out. Look, we talked about the coffee maker we had, super automatic. It yep. broke. We bought a new to us one. It was a used, and yeah. we were like, the challenge was, can you part out the old one and pay for the old one and pay for the 
a new one. The old one cost a hundred dollars on Craigslist, and the new one cost three fifty. Three fifty from eBay. So so we're in for four hundred and fifty dollars for both of these things. Right. This week we sold seven more parts. Yeah, so Brian. Total. Yeah, this is all you. So a total of eight. So we sold two pieces for $80, three pieces for $25, two for $15, and one for $10. Yeah. That's a total of $275 of just partying these things out. Gross. So we need to make another $175, and we're drinking every coffee is just a free coffee. Free coffee. coffee. It's just like free. Basically. Yep. Minus my labor and paying our, (laughs) plus paying all fees and taxes. Yeah, I know people. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> but still, <laughs> it's, uh, you can you can think that it's pretty much free. Yeah, so it's fun, you know. Yeah, no, I, I the other thing we parted out too was um, this old. Did we talk about this before? The old Polaroid, this like enlarger camera. The thing is ridiculously huge. We paid ten to fifteen dollars for it. We were actually trying to figure out what it was for. Like it was in a doctor's office in the nineties. Yeah. So. And I, I don't know if they're taking pictures of like X-rays or something. I like, couldn't figure it out because it's like an enlarger camera. I d- I yeah. d- I couldn't figure out what it was used for. But anyway, so we bought the whole thing for ten. Yeah. Because you know nobody at once is big. You big, can't bulky. ship it. The thing's huge. And so uh, we took it apart. Yep. We. And, sorry. Me. You. I took it apart took piece it apart. by piece. We sold the lights. A week ago for, for $120. $120. And this week we sold, like, I don't know what it it's was. It's like a viewer. It was called the Reflex Viewer. We sold that for $150. $150. So, so we're up to $280. So, sorry. We're up to, yeah, $280 so far. $280, yeah. For something we bought for $10. And that's just two pieces, right. essentially. So, partying out is, is it, good. I. I actually enjoy it. I mean, God, am I going to be one of these places where I become like a parts warehouse? Why not? Why not? Yeah. I'm like, fine. Yeah. I'll gladly. So how do you part it out again for people that might be a new to it? How do you part something out? You look for the screws and you start unscrewing them. But how do you know what <laughs> piece is like a complete piece by itself? Well, the tough thing is actually... Um, I was using a website called like e replacement parts or something, and you really have to make sure that either there's a part number on the part, which not all the time is it there, um, or there's a got the 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 Polaroid is very old, you know, it's from the early '90s. But we found the original manual, and we found some random person with like a 1990s website, it's like a hand coded HTML. Yeah, site. that had some of the parts listed on there so i was able to piece it there were honestly some parts in the coffee maker and the um uh polaroid that i was like i have no idea what this is i'm just gonna kind of guess with what it's called and what it seemed to have been uh and if someone's looking for it hopefully they'll find it because i don't i don't know what to call it so that that's something to look out for to make sure that you know you're not just taking apart something that you can't look up because it's good to have an a part number, but also a part name. Because a lot of the coffee maker parts, I was like, this is probably a such and such. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, it's not called that at all, actually. Right. I don't, you know, someone looking for that part would be confused. But for the most part, get it, part. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> um, there are normally, especially if it's a fairly modern, yeah. it's within the past 20 uh, uh, years, yeah. there will be a website that, that sell re- replacement parts. So right. uh, you just try and find those, and they'll tell you everything the model number. And they'll tell you the price, too. Everything I mean, and price. And then, yeah. So you can price it lower, or yeah. um, if they. The thing about e, e replacement parts, a lot of their stuff was either special order or no longer made or available. So I was like, great, I'm literally the only person that has this available. Price it at eighty dollars, right. you know, if 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 it's worth that, you think, you know. Yeah, and so you know, we've always said if we lived in an urban area, we'd be trolling Craigslist trolling for the Craigslist. free stuff. People throwing away appliances, right, and taking that stuff apart. Yeah, that would absolutely. be, I think, a very a lucrative business. You know, uh, I think you could do very well with. Yeah, it. absolutely. Uh, oh, and then just the last kind of like piecing out thing. We bought for one of our rentals, we bought a baby gate. Oh, this is so a, funny. Because it's a second floor 
house. Yeah, there's two you know? stories. And we get a lot of people with kids. And yeah. so we've, like, learned to put, like, a little pack and play in, like, a... And, like, a high chair. And, and so we a... also put it over a baby gate because someone mentioned it. So For the stairs. So it doesn't fall down the stairs. So, so the thing about this baby gate, I think it costs, like, 25 $40. $40. It was $40. Okay. So it was, like, $40. I feel like it was cheaper than that. So the baby gate can just be like pushed against the stairs and the wall like the banister and the wall so it's like steady but you it comes with these little cups that you can screw to the wall and make it into like a swinging door Mm -hmm. also if it's like semi-permanent we didn't need those because it's not semi-permanent so so jay's like getting ready to throw it away throw it away I, i was just like dude look i know the name of it i know what they're called i have the model number I'll just say, like, someone, I bet someone's, like, you know, sister-in-law gave them the baby gate, and they don't have the cup things anymore, and they need it. Look, in, like, two days, that thing sold yep. for $19, yep. those little cups. So we made for. almost half of our money. On these little parts. On just the little tiny parts. I That's mean. That's all you. You can't. You did it. That's the thing that I love to do with Ikea. When we either buy Ikea stuff or get it on Craigslist and we have extra parts that we're like, oh, we didn't use this bracket thing. Sell the bracket. Make right. back some of the money. I mean, and, and so I got to really stress that. Obviously, at the end of the day, a money is important. You know. Right. A, a making money at the end of the month that we can pay all of our bills and do cool stuff with. Totally important. But, man... That process of getting there, it's like this, is, is, is fun. much more fun. Because it feels like even more valuable. You like feel like, feels... well, also it feels like, it feels like you're kind of, uh, what's the word? Like getting something that was useless. Right. Like this piece of whatever is useless to me. I have no use for it. But I'm pretty sure someone else will pay for it. Right. Someone else in wherever. And someone was probably very grateful they were to like, get that because oh my how God. else are they going to get that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, okay, scavenge of the week. So we did no other scavenging except for that one online auction. Yeah. So that was it. We didn't yep. go anyplace else. It we was, filled uh, up our entire car. Right. With all um, that stuff. Customer issues? None. The only issue I had was being a customer on eBay. I bought some stuff from someone and she took three weeks to ship it. Right. And three you, weeks. And it's interesting. So if the buyer doesn't, I'm sorry, if the person who sold you the item doesn't ship it, eBay actually doesn't automatically do anything, nope. which is interesting. So I know. Isn't that weird? You, I guess after two weeks, finally got eBay involved. Well, I opened up. I did not. Well, first of all, I messaged her and said, has this shipped? I need these things, you know? No answer. Next day, I open up a case, item not as received. She still doesn't reply. And so there's one day left for me to close the case, get my money back, and and be like, I never got these. There's no shipping. She finally says, oh, I shipped these, and here's the tracking number. It's just like... And, well, and, and, <laughs> and also... And they, I got them. Also, in that a message, she's like, you wouldn't believe all the problems I've had. It's just one thing after another. And it's like, you know... I roll... That is just the you know, worst. I think, again, it's the difference between people using eBay just to kind of get rid of their own stuff, a miscellaneous stuff versus people who are actually running a business. Like, we would never tell the buyer, make an excuse. <laughs> oh, I've had a crazy week. <laughs> it's tough or something. It's like none of my business. Like, yeah, it care. doesn't just matter. Ship the thing. And I was trying to use this item for one of my rentals. So I'm just like sitting here waiting for this thing for my business. It's just like, come on. And, and actually, as a buyer, yeah. Um, you bought a set of of uh, glasses, like drinking oh, yeah. uh, glasses, and the woman shipped them in a priority box. Which you know, this is like a glass, you a know, glass, a, a thin glass. glass. She put each. We rolled each one in like a piece of bubble, bubble wrap, wrap and, and just, just put them in the box. And so, of course, <laughs> someone at the post office like probably leaned against yes. it or something. And one of them, I'm surprised only one. Came I broken. thought all of them would be broken because yeah. I looked at the box and I thought, oh, I ordered. Like, these aren't going to fit in this yeah. box. And I open them up. I'm like, oh, my God. And we actually just let it go because she sold them for how much? It was like... <laughs> it was seven drinking glasses 
for seven dollars free shipping. Right. So this is a classic example of someone who's just cleaning out their closet. So she, I'm surprised. I I'd be surprised if she didn't uh, lose money. Uh, lose money on that. I'm like so, I know it cost you yeah. seven dollars to ship these yeah, to me. Yeah. Just uh, shoot, man. Tough. Yeah. Just but well. That's, that's yeah. a grind. You seven dollars free shipping for thin. Yeah. Drinking glasses. No. Yeah. Mm-mm. Okay, things we learned in the uh, forum. We were having in kind of an interesting conversation. A guy came on and he said he bought a like vintage, like original Playboy Mansion. Oh, it's a cap. Or a Playboy Club, like one of the bodyguards or something or the... Yeah. I don't know what you call it. The guy sitting out front would have right. on one of these caps. With a patch. Yeah. So anyway, he found it. He said he bought it for $75. And he's, you know, he's like one of those rare oh, items. He thinks it's worth at least a thousand dollars. A thousand, maybe. And the question's always like, uh, do you take it to an auction house? Right. Do you put it on buy it now with a high price, or yeah. do you put it on auction on eBay? And for us, other people might have those stories. Taking stuff to an auction house has never worked. For never us. been yeah. good for us. I mean, us. if it's like under. A couple thousand dollars. I feel like it's not... Yeah. I mean, I feel yeah. like the only stories I've ever heard, and they're so uh, uh, rare, is like people that find a piece of art and take to an auction house and sells for like $100,000. Yeah. Mean, that's like you go to uh, Las Vegas and pull the, <laughs> the slots and you make them win a yeah. million dollars. It's like, it's cool to hear, but it's not like a, a good business practice right. in our mind. Uh, because often auctions, houses know as much about stuff as as we all do. We went to yeah. an auction house with a couple of pieces of art and they came back out with Google printouts. And we were like, we just drove two hours one way right. for you to look at this. Yeah. And they were like, well, we Googled it. I'm like, I Googled it before and, I got here. And I know where this guy was coming from. You know, yeah. if you're selling mainly stuff under $100, like we normally do. Yeah. Getting something that could sell for a thousand dollars more, you're like, it, how do I maximize? It like makes it really kind of scary and nerve wracking, and you you don't want to under sell it. We don't sell that kind of stuff all the time either, but I think we've sold enough thousand dollar items where I know I realize like it's not that big of a deal, right? You know, at the end of the day, um, on eBay, like a thousand dollars seems like a lot of money but if you search on ebay for sold items I mean, there's there a lot of stuff that gets sold for thousands of dollars tens of thousands of it's dollars. just like another a another layer level, of yeah. collector yeah and um you know ebay i think is a fine place to sell an item for under ten thousand dollars without really being worried about it so did know? he decide what he was going to do like Hi, buy it now with make offer and see what the offers are coming through. He said what he was thought about doing is just putting up for like six thousand dollars, yeah, with make offer. See what people come in, or I think I said to put the uh, make offer because I like the idea of doing a a reverse auction, start like insanely high, allow people to send in offers, right privately, right. and then you get to kind of feel what the market... So none of the people see what offers are being sent in, and you right. just kind of see. If everyone's, like, giving you a 1000 bucks, that's probably about Maybe it's, what it's yeah. worth. So put it up for, you know, seventeen fifty best offer and see what or comes Or just in. take one of those we'll Take one of the offers, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. It just really depends. Right. exactly. I mean, the reason why we've always been iffy about auctions is just like, yeah, you just... Even if you started at 1000 and it sells for... A thousand, if you'd waited, would it sell for more? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'd say take the money and run, right? Yeah. Uh, Okay. So, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Talking about, like, you know, when you do do just your normal scavenging out there, you will find items. High price items. High price items. There was another person on the forum who found an original painting in the Pacific Northwest and, um, you know, that person is a whatever registered known artist. I forget what it's called. Um, and, you know, their pieces in the past have sold for several thousand dollars. So that's another person who was like, I found this at my local whatever. It was, a you know, it costs, you know, 20 bucks or whatever. Yeah. Is art, it real? Yeah. I mean, art is, uh, is tough, you know, because, I mean, I never want to tell people not to spend their time 
a research, you know, although I feel like you always have to kind of balance that it's with like not being too precious about stuff because yeah. not every artist is like yeah super sought after yeah and it's going to be worth a million dollars although but. the the artist that we sold that thousand dollar painting of wasn't really well known they had one other piece it was a folk artist yeah we sold it for a thousand dollars but how do you know it wasn't worth $10, I don't think it was. It was acrylic. How do you know that? If it was oil, maybe it was acrylic. <laughs> like, and there was a hole in it. Yeah, I mean, I just think <laughs> so, like anytime we've like publicly talked about selling something for a thousand, there's always someone that that writes just like, well, if you had how long did that, you would have made fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. I'm like, yeah, you really? Know. It's like I. <laughs> I doubt it's it. it's really hard to tell because those kind of items don't have like a set a market. It's just whatever it's you can like, get someone to buy. Yeah, it for, exactly. You know? So. Uh, Anyway, good luck to that guy. I'd love to hear how much that hat is worth. Oh, yeah. I would love to get an update. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, answer some questions. Okay. You can give us a call on our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Hey, Jay and Ryan. It's Matt in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, Matty Fu on the forums on the rare occasion I make it on there. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a call and talk about a couple things. Uh, recently, I picked up kind of a seasonal job doing deliveries of late luggage from the local airport. Uh, so that's been really nice. It, it actually fits in really well with having a eBay and Amazon store. Um, and it gives me a lot of time to listen to podcasts because I kind of do the long distance deliveries. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's nice to be able to just decide, do I want to take this, you know, four hour delivery or not, uh, kind of based on how my day's going. Uh, so that's been really cool. Uh, the other thing is I wanted to share a strategy that's worked pretty well for me. Uh, and that is to talk to small thrift store owners and kind of see, uh, if what I, I do can help them, uh, I don't know if the ecosystem is exactly the same in the States, uh, but here the small thrift stores basically all get more stuff in than they can possibly put out. Uh, and how that works is they call another charity that comes and fills up a flatbed or like a U-Haul trailer and uh, that charity takes it and delivers it to Value Village. Uh, Savers is what they're called in the States. Um, and so when they do that, they give the small thrift store just a tiny, tiny payment. Like, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's like $40 for a full trailer load. And so if there's something that you would buy in bulk from a thrift store, you can talk to them and say, hey, I'm interested in that stuff. I'm local. I can come and pick it up at the most convenient time for you. I've actually been able to get books for free as long as I come once a week. And so being a bookseller on Amazon, that works really great for me. I, I've come up with the way to dispose of the ones that I can't use and all the ones I can use, I'm getting for free. So it's really great. Uh, you can do a similar thing, I think, with electronic recyclers. If you're willing to pay more than what the uh, like scrap rate is for e-waste, you could totally go to them and say, I will take all the printers, laptops, whatever, and I will pay you double what the scrap price is. Because the scrap price is so, so little. Um, so th that's just a couple ideas for people. Uh, the other thing I've been experimenting with is uh, doing the promoted listings, but just doing super, super low rates, uh, so like 1%, uh, just with the idea being that to be <laughs> super cheap with my promoted listings, but have them show up more than people who aren't using the promoted listings at all, which I think is an awful lot of sellers. Uh, so I've had pretty good luck with that. It's hard to gauge if the stuff is selling because they've looked at every single other one or if 
it just happened to be a promoted listing on the first page, and that's the one they chose. Uh, but just an idea I thought I'd put out there. Again, thank you guys so much for what you're doing. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, you know, that's kind of uh, on point with our topic for today is uh, talking about uh, sourcing, you know, how right, do you source right. your cheap. That is another way. Uh, yeah, a lot of these thrift stores uh, will get too much stuff. Right. And like we, I, we have a buddy, uh, Mike, who I've actually I've never met, but we've talked to. He lives in kind of our area, in our, our region. And he says that he has relationships with a couple of of these big thrift store charities mm -hmm. where they where he'll pick up truckloads of stuff yeah and he'll sell it and then give them a percentage oh so interesting for them i guess it's good because they can't process it all yeah so they still get some uh, money out of it well and I, i've heard at our thrift store too like if they just have stuff that just isn't selling i mean they put it in a big box truck and send it I don't know where. Well, we have some other people hey, we know that run kind of like a estate sale thrift store company. They buy Gaylords full of clothes from, from Goodwill, Goodwill, right? You know, so they'll buy like 15 of these huge, they call them Gaylords, but they're, yeah, they're boxes, big boxes, gigantic, yeah. know, that go, come on a pallet. And I bet they just get it for so cheap. Yeah. I think the issue with that is, I mean, we've all looked into stuff like that, just kind of looked into it. I think the thing is those kind of places want you to be a consistent buyer. Right, all the time. Like yeah. they have stuff they've got to move mm -hmm. and you have to have the facilities. To do it, The yeah. wherewithal yeah. to be able to handle that much stuff yeah. on a regular basis. Right. It sounds like this guy, maybe he was able to just buy just small amounts at a time. Right. But uh, why not, you know? Um, well, if you're willing to like get a truckload of books and then throw away half of them, you know, go for it. Hi, Ryan and Jay. My name is Elizabeth and over on the forum, I'm Liz for a day. And I was just calling in reference to um, the voicemail that you received from the Japan seller, which is actually awesome, about the offers to watchers feature. And the reason why I wanted to comment on it, because um, I do believe that it actually works and I'll tell you why. But first of all, like you said, just like on you all's account, it doesn't show in the seller's hub how to get to the how to get to this feature. I don't think it's rolled out here in the United States yet, or they may be rolling it out like slowly. And, but the way that you get to it, again, as you mentioned, is you can go to the link, and the link is actually eBay.com slash mys slash overview, and um, I just have it bookmarked just like you do, and then I can go there every day. Now, this takes me less than 10 minutes a day, depending on how many offers to watchers it is. I currently have about almost 900 listings in my store. So I may get maybe um, probably 10 or less um, offers that I can send out. But what makes it really easy is I do the same thing as our Japan um, seller, and that's open up like several tabs. So I'll go to the overview page. I'll open up tabs for each offer that I see there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll send a message. And just like him as well, I have a template for the message itself. And I'll tell you um, briefly what the message says. So it says, I hope, you know, all is well today. You have been selected to receive a special one-time offer on this item that you have shown interest in. And as you can see, this offer is discounted significantly from the original asking offer of, say, $21.99. I'm always available for any questions should you have any. Thank you for checking out the, this listing and for your interest and FYI if you decide to purchase I will ship immediately so I put that into um, the offer because I think it's better if you just don't just send out an offer but actually say something um, within the message itself so I just cut that cut and paste that in and just make sure that the amount um, within that message is correct and then 
Um, what I do is after I've done that, I go back to the overview page and I reload the page again. And quite often new, um, new items will show up for you to send offers to. Cause I know, um, Jay, you said like you go in and it just shows like five, five, um, watchers that you can send or five items you can send offers out to. But if you reload that page after you've sent offers, often more offers will come up. So I hope that all makes sense. Thanks for the podcast. I really enjoy it and keep up the good work. Bye. Yeah. I, um, when you said, let's see, so it's ebay.com slash M Y S slash overview. That is the new, like my eBay selling overview page. Yeah. So you can you know, scroll down and say, see, send offer to buyers. That is, and then the it gives you five random, five, only five. But I then, if like, you, yeah. I, I've seen, so we've sent five offers, and then it will either uh, refill with five more or okay. it'll just stop. Okay. So, people have told us it's in beta mode, right? For that's, the US sellers, that's like the, the word around the campfire, yeah. no official explanation. Yeah, so, um, that. That they're just trying it out, you know. I've I've probably sent maybe twenty five offers to people, and, and nothing's happened. Right. I think it's brilliant. She has a written like a really super professional yeah. message, so maybe that's more helpful. But uh, you know, I don't know. I I, I I don't know if eBay's just collecting info to see if anyone cares and if it's a um, you know a feature that is worth keeping or not. I think it's very cool and I would love to have that for lots of other items or have the ability to, uh, yeah, like I have tons of items with watchers. Like five items is like nothing for our store. So I'm yeah. like, but it's like know. we said, I can see how it could be abused and it would just become like spam. I mean, right. what, let sure, me say, yeah. you know, out of 8,000 items, probably half of our items have at least right. one person that is uh, watching it. What am I allowed to send 4,000 offers every day? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that would be insane. Yeah, I, I, I'll be interested to see how it plays out. Hey, Jay and Ryan, this is Brian from Illinois. In last week's podcast, you were talking about how you'd, you'd sell anything if you could make money off of it, but some things you just can't get interested in. You don't want to look at it for a year. And I agree with everything you said on that. But I guess there was one other take on that that I was thinking about. I went to an auction recently in person, and they had a whole bunch of dolls there. And a lot of them were old dolls from, I don't know, the 30s or 40s. And they must have had 60, 70, I don't know. They had a lot of dolls. Some of them were just Barbie dolls, trays of them. But a lot of them were collectibles. And I could not care less about dolls. And But these things were selling for some pretty good money. Uh, Somebody liked them. Uh, but my issue was, I, I'm not interested in dolls, but I'm also not interested in researching dolls to figure out which ones are worth a lot of money and which ones are just junk. So I guess that's that's uh, one of the takes that I had on that subject. Thanks. Yes, that is a very good point that we forgot to touch on. You know, other than just having the item, having to bring it home, clean it up, photograph it, then there's the research. It's just like... It's like a death, it's like a death, you know, research is just like, you gotta, like you said, go down the rabbit hole, and which one's worth more, this one's a little damaged, like, oh God. Yeah, it becomes, I mean, it's like, does it bring you joy? Right, the, exactly. The, the, it's a question that seems to be on people's minds these days, like, do you want it in your house? And do you want to have to, like you said, research it, find out about it? You know, it's like talking about parting out, uh, you know, coffee machines. And, you know, some people might be like, that is the most boring thing I could possibly think about. And I'm like, for me, it's cool because it's like, you know, this weird piece of this machine could be worth, you know, X amount of money to someone who just needs this one piece. I'm like, that to me is very cool. To some people, not so much. And then there are other people that would... see dolls and be like this is the most exciting thing in my life because i grew up with dolls and i knew everything about them and let me get my hands on them so i think for us the bottom line is if you don't buy what you love then yeah you're going to stop 
doing what we're doing, so it doesn't help you. There's so much other stuff to buy. Right. You know, that's interesting, yeah. and you can learn about and care about. Hey, y'all! This is Bruce out here in uh, Amish country, Ohio, with uh, Shooting Star Trading Post, and I, I just heard you make a comment on a podcast a couple weeks ago. I think you were talking about taxes. You said you could take your gross income as a qualified business deduction. It's 20%. It is 20%, but it's 20% of your net. So I didn't, I'm sure you've already figured that out by now. But uh, also, I had a question on sales tax. Is there something we need to be doing differently other than charging sales tax when we sell in Ohio, or do we need to, to ramp up our profile or just need some advice on sales tax. We're not a very big seller yet, but we're leaning to, towards growing our online presence. So thanks, guys. Love your podcast. Hope you're having a good one. Stay well. Okay, I will make a correction here. It was Jay that said it was gross. I said it was net because I knew it was net, and he didn't believe me, and I was, I was calling, right. I was saying just this is a gross topic. It's gross. Well, and the other thing about sales tax, I have no idea. It depends on your state. I don't know what anybody's supposed to do other than well, okay, state. two things. Um, yeah, so that whole thing about if you run a business through like an LLC or an S corp or like in our case a general partnership or if you're a single, what is it called? sole proprietor? Sole proprietor. It's a pass through. It's a pass through business, and you're allowed to then yeah do the twenty percent off your net. Yes. Um, if you're just an individual person and you get paid individually like the money comes to you yeah. you cannot do that yeah so um uh yeah again we have an accountant the great thing is i don't need to actually understand all that stuff specifically as long right. as he does and then he teaches us and yeah as far as sales tax yeah everyone has to collect sales tax if you sell something to someone in your state right. other than that what's happening is ebay is handling collecting those taxes and paying those taxes to any other state that now has these new taxes. The new rules. That money, as far as I understand, never touches any of us. Right. So we're not collecting that and then eBay taking it. It's like we make the deal with the buyer, then eBay tax on that tax and they deal with it. Right. So. Like I've sold to several people in Washington state and there's like a little note on the sales page that's like, we've, you know, taken this tax and we're remitting it to the state for you. So, Great. So that could not be any better for right. us. And I think the big companies have been fighting this tax because they ultimately know people like us can't collect taxes from Washington 800 state. different counties and states right. and figure that out. So eBay knows that they're going to have to do that. And it's probably a big pain in the butt. It is, yeah. But it looks like they it's gotta happening. They got to do it. So it's good for us. Hey, Jay and Ryan. Thanks for everything you do. Just wanted to add a question for the first time. I'm a long-time listener, but first-time caller. Uh, question is about keeping co- keeping track of your cost of goods sold. I know you guys do it through, uh, I think, GoDaddy Bookkeeping, if I remember correctly. Uh, but you actually don't keep real spreadsheets otherwise. And, uh, you know, I keep pretty meticulous track of all of my sales, but I am looking to automate it a little bit more in 2019. So, how do you add your cost of goods sold to GoDaddy Bookkeeping? I signed up for it, so I try to kind of want to get it up and rolling. Uh, so I know when, you know, obviously when something sells, you could add it each and every time, or you could add the total at the end of the month. Uh, that's probably what I'll do. Just wanted to know how you guys keep track of it. And second question is, uh, you guys use, uh, cashback programs when you're buying online, especially on eBay, the eBay bucks, eBay and, uh, cashback. Debit cards or credit cards, just didn't know if you guys used those and took advantage of the perks that they bring. Anyway, thanks for all that you do. Have a good day. So Cost of Goods Sold is not easy. Like um, all of us, you have to keep your own uh, system. So our accountant helped us figure out how to keep a system that makes sense for us. It means we have to have like a spreadsheet. And so GoDaddy does not deal with any of that stuff. Yeah. And other uh, sellers who I'm sure will either call in or if you go on our uh, forum they can share they've developed their own ways to do it there's also something called easy tracker auction or something like that it's like a software i think it's only pc though yeah you can, but you can do your cost it's basically like a spreadsheet that's that if you buy every 
a year and it helps you keep track of cogs. But yeah, our account just says if the IRS ever came to us, they would just want to see that we have a system in place for that. And we do. And right. That's how we do it. Um, in terms of like eBay bucks. Yeah, I have a buying account that I buy stuff for our rentals. Um, I buy stuff for us personally and I buy merchandise to resell on eBay on eBay. And you just you sign up for eBay bucks. I think it's like. One percent of every purchase is very low. Like every quarter, I get like not very much money, but I use it to buy other stuff. Um, and also, I attached one of my uh, cards that does one percent cash back, which is also very low. But you know, after a month or two, you get a little bit of money back. Um, but you could use other rewards cards to buy stuff on eBay as well. Yeah, um, we have the. I think it's it's Chase Amazon card. We have the Amazon card. So we get Amazon points on... When... Anytime we buy stuff. And we get enough points to buy, like, a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, like, like eventually. Yeah, Yeah, you know, you get a couple hundred bucks. And it's great. We buy stuff for our rentals. and uh, Yeah. Hey, it's free money, right? Yeah, I mean... You should take real estate. you should take advantage of that stuff, but it's not that much money, but it helps. I mean, like if I get you know after a quarter, I don't know if it's a quarter or every six months they do eBay bucks. The funny thing about eBay bucks is they will send you a message and say, "Hey, you got this many eBay bucks. You have like a week to use them." Like they they don't mess around. They're right. not like, "Oh, you have like a month." Yeah. It's it's very little. It's like eighteen days or something. Right. You're like, "Whoa, I gotta shop for something." <laughs> it's it's kind of funny how they do that. They reward you, and then they're like, you better use it quick. So, anyway. Yeah. It's free real estate. It's a house. Here are the keys. Take it. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, that's it for the podcast this week. You can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discussed and to join the conversation on the forum. You can call and leave a question on our voicemail line. Again, the phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video showing you what sold, how much it sold for, currently being brought to you by Stephen Schultz. You can subscribe to our Patreon account to help support us for as little as $5 a month. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube for free. So you always get the latest episode. You can buy our archive of every single episode that's five years worth of podcasts. It's almost 400 episodes to put on your listening device to listen to offline. Um, That link is on the sidebar or the top menu of our blog. We are ending this podcast in three, two, one. It's free real estate.